Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So today we are going to talk about very important topics. So in this video, we're going to be more focused on the player's condition, what the league is going to look like going forward, and it's going to be very Barcelona focused. We're not going to really talk about transfers in this video. And so we are first going to talk about the Barcelona players' conditions and how they are doing and what we're going to do heading into the start of the league. It says here that it is official starting on Monday, Barcelona will return to full team training without limits on group sizes and so starting this monday next week we will be entering into the phase two and this is going to be a moment where the players are going to have to be very cautious about how they follow these procedures because the players will need to follow a specific procedure in order to keep everything healthy and clean and we can see here according to tebas he did have a online chat with marca and he said god willing we'll start on june 11. let's hope madrid and barcelona pass to phase too. And so I do want to talk about the player shapes and how they are doing right now because I believe that this is a very important topic to talk about because we have to keep track on how these players are doing heading into the league. The players must be in good shape because the league season that we are going to head to is going to be very crammed, very intense. We are going to be playing a game like every two to three days. And especially with this Barcelona team, about 80% of this team is over the age of 29 years old. So we're not one of the youngest teams in Europe and so the fitness must be top top priority in this team so according to Fernando Polo he said Barcelona's attackers are in fantastic physical shape two weeks prior in return of La Liga in training the players appear to be in excellent physical condition Messi, Suarez, Griezmann and Breathwaite are all on form and are ready to fight for La Liga title and honestly after everything that we have heard over the past four to six weeks this news right here is probably the best news I have heard in a while because two months ago we were going to head into the second leg against Napoli in the UEFA Champions League and go with a game plan of just using Lionel Messi and Antoine Griezmann because Setien was worried about using all three attackers that we had in our disposal which was Ansu Fati, Griezmann and Messi because if one more forward got injured we would literally be left with only two forwards left in the team and we also had Breathwaite but he just entered and he wasn't promising enough at that moment but now we are here we are hearing that total of four attackers are healthy and are ready to compete for the title and when we are talking about this pandemic right I believe that this pandemic did greatly affect the clubs in a financial perspective but when we are talking about in a sporting perspective I believe that this pandemic was a great blessing to this team because now I believe that we are going to head and tackle these remaining La Liga games stronger than ever and we will be in our best physical shape now the big question remains how will Setien line up this team when, when we do head to that date on starting the league and I'm talking about how are we going to see the defense how are we going to see the midfield and most importantly what's going to be our front three and how are we going to function and also could we see some surprising performances like Breathwaite Breathwaite is looking like he does want to succeed in a Barcelona shirt so could we see Breathwaite have standout performances when we do come back into the league and if he does play well could it then start him in that front three we can even talk about Antoine Griezmann could we see Antoine Griezmann finally play his game and looked more comfortable in that left wing position because we have seen these players work extremely hard on the training field so it's going to be very interesting to see how these players play on the field after having two months of self-reflecting self-analyzing and self-critiquing and i do want to go further detail on one player which is luis suarez according to mundo deportivo luis suarez could be handed the medical green light on monday and i also want to talk about one more player and it is a player that i did not mention in the past report in the first report and that is Ansu Fati so Ansu Fati did not attend in today's training session and it says here according to multiple sources Ansu Fati was absent in today's training session Javi Miguel reports that the player continues to have patellar tendon problems while Mundo says that the reason is unknown and then we have another report according to Moises Llorens Ansu Fati has days when he exercises without the equipment it is not a matter of a single day he has dragged knee problems but the doctors have controlled it he has to be careful the intent Intensity of the sessions take their toll and so as for now I'm going to have to say that it is unclear on what Ansu Fati's physical problems are and we also don't know the expected return date of Ansu Fati but but the only thing that we do know is that Ansu Fati did not attend in today's training session and I'm letting you guys know right now that when we are talking about a player like Ansu Fati and him getting injured I don't think that this is nothing serious because we are talking about a player who is 17 years old and when he does encounter problems 
like this, physical problems like this, he is able to get away with things that older players cannot get away with. So we should be seeing Ansu Fati come back sooner rather than later. I will be updating you guys on this player to see what is going on and when his expected return date will be. And hopefully he will be back to start for the kickoff of La Liga. Now I want to slowly transition into the league itself because we do have a lot of updates to talk about and other competitions for FC Barcelona. So it is official that La Liga will be back and they are looking to start on June 11th. It is officially confirmed. The only thing that we have to go through is for the players to train as a whole. Like everyone has to make contact. People have to be exposed to each other and be physical on the field. And if everything goes well, the June 11th date will proceed. And we can see here on this picture that it basically says that the government of Spain have announced and given the green light for La Liga to return on the 11th of June. And the first game that they do want to start off with will be between Real Betis and Sevilla, which will probably be the only game on June 11th. And there are two players that I really do want to focus on and I have explained earlier. It's about Emerson and Carlos Elena. And since this match will be the only match being played on June 11th, I will be making a pre-match preview for this match. And I also will be making a post-match review. And again, I'm going to be very focused on Emerson and Carlos Elena to see how they played, what could have they done better, and how would they be able to fit in FC Barcelona because I believe that it is a very important thing to take note of when we do watch this match and these two players are rumored to come back to FC Barcelona at some point. It's going to happen eventually before the summer of 2021 and in this report they continue to say that the season could be ending either on the 18th of July or the 19th of July which basically means that all of these La Liga matches that will be taking place will be played within a span of one month and a week and when we are expecting this amount of volume expect matches to be played on the week days and i also want to talk about the uefa champions league final really quick so according to moises Llorens, this season's uefa champions league final which was scheduled to play in istanbul could now take place in lisbon which is in portugal even though it's not official yet it's a real possibility and there has been multiple reports stating that istanbul will not be able to handle the cost of the final without ticket sales meaning that they basically need an audience in order for them to handle that final but as of now no audience will be attending that final which is why that they will be losing the benefit of hosting the final and we can also see here according to the new york times the uefa champions league final will be moved from turkey to another location amid ongoing concerns about the pandemic uefa are now considering a number of alternatives venues and its plans to complete the competition then they also expressed that a decision will be reached after the executive committee meets on june 17th the uefa champions league final remains to be in august but there is still uncertainty on where that's going to be at as of now there is talks that they do want to move it away from turkey and move it to portugal right now they are in the process of finalizing the agreement with the turkish officials in order for them to give the okay to move the final somewhere else and we also do have some updates on the transfer window for this summer so according to sky the summer transfer window could open from september 1st and close on october 5th and this is very very surprising right because if they are going to start on september 1st that is a very very long time from now because usually we see the transfer window open like mid-june or like in july but for them to open on september 1st that is a very long time and i think that the clubs will highly benefit from this because they will be having more time to game plan on who they want to get and bring into their own clubs and it also makes you wonder like why is barcelona pressuring the completion of the latoro martinez operation like they know that the window is going to start on September 1st which is going to be three months from now why are they pressuring to complete this so early and so this is going to come down to two reasons and the first reason is because Barcelona want to be first in line and want to be the first ones to bring a proposal to Inter Milan because Barcelona are well aware that there are competitors out there there are clubs and teams that want to get Lautaro Martinez and Barcelona do not want to lose that chance and it would only make sense for them to find an agreement with Inter Milan as early as possible and then the second reason why is because they do want to have as much time as possible to have a plan for Neymar Jr. And believe me, I know that it seems very unrealistic to bring Neymar Jr. and Latoro Martinez in this summer, but the only club that would try something wild like this would be FC Barcelona. They would be the only club to try and bring in a player like Neymar and Latoro Martinez in the same summer. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't think so, but Barcelona is going to try and do that. They will try and find a way to make a game plan for Neymar Jr. once they have 
que Lautaro Martinez operation completed because to them it would not make any sense for them to wait until the last minute to complete the transfers of Lautaro Martinez and Neymar Jr. within the last three weeks of the transfer window. So we should expect very surprising moves to happen this summer and even though it's very surprising it's going to be very very exciting to see what Barcelona can get done. And now moving on to the last topic of the day and this is a situation that happened yesterday but I really do want to talk about this in this video. So it is official that Andre Curry is no longer in charge of Brazilian football in Barcelona scouting department. It is one of the changes in the department of a process that started last January. And if you guys don't know who Andre Curry is and just to sum it all up, he basically went to go look and scout for young Brazilian talent and bring them to FC Barcelona. And he is wildly known to bring in Neymar Jr. back in 2013. But since then, he has not had the best track record. And this is what we are here to discuss because we are going to name the players that he scouted. And then I'm going to have you guys discuss, was it the right move for Barcelona to fire Andre Curry? So in that same year of signing Neymar Jr., which I believe was in 2014, Barcelona did sign a player named Douglas and that came through Curry. So Douglas signed a five-year contract and he spent two seasons at FC Barcelona only making eight appearances. And then now in 2019, he did sign with Besiktas. Then moving on to Gabriel Novaes, basically just to sum up this guy's career so far, he has been juggled between the clubs of Barcelona B, Sao Paulo B, and Cordoba. And this has been happening since 2019. Then moving on to Vitinho, he entered Barcelona B on July 7th, 2017. One year later, he left and visited multiple Brazilian clubs. And now at the age of 22 years old, it is very unlikely for him to move forward with Barcelona. And then moving on to Mateos Fernandes. He is one of the most recent prospects that the scouts have brought in and he is currently on a loan with Real Valladolid and till this day since he did start that loan in January 2020 he has made not one appearance for that club and the main reason why Barcelona want to put him in a loan with Real Valladolid was for him to gain experience in La Liga and he is expected to join Barcelona on July 1st and then I want to talk about Gustavo Maia. This is a player that I have talked about not too long ago I believe that it was about five to six videos ago that I did talk about this player and while this player does seem like a potential signing and even if he does well with FC Barcelona in three to four years this will have nothing to do with Andre Curry so if Gustavo does find success with Barcelona Curry has nothing to do with this transfer because he did not scout him in the first place and many might question maybe Brazil just doesn't have the talent that they used to have maybe they're finding it hard to find that talent because maybe Brazil is not as good as they used to be but throughout that time of all this scouting Barcelona missed on players like Vinicius Jr, Rodrigo, Gabriel Jesus, Jan Cautu, Reynier Jesus all of these players did come from Brazil and they were scouted by other clubs and Barcelona could have easily find these players but the quality of our scouters in FC Barcelona are not doing the job that they're supposed to do and so with the firing of Andre Curry Barcelona also let go of 40 to 50 percent of their scouts they cut it in half they used to have 40 now they have about 12 to 15 scouts left in that club and it says here according to said Catalunya from now on the team will be reduced between 12 to 15 or maybe even 20 scouts the cutbacks which were already planned but became a necessity after the break enforced by COVID-19 so I believe that what's going on here should be more than just cutting a bunch of scouters off from FC Barcelona this needs to be a discussion within the board and they need to talk about how are they going to approach looking for Brazilian talent? Because again, this needs to be more than just laying off a bunch of scouters. There needs to be a reestablishment in the scouting department, especially in Brazil, because I have just named the players that we have missed and all of these players are looking to become great potential players in the future. And Barcelona missed on all of that. And the reason why this is such a big deal for FC Barcelona is because when good Brazilian players step up into European football, they are what give football the character, the excitement, the entertainment, and Barcelona has to be part of that. Barcelona has history with Brazilian players, and for us to miss on like six good Brazilian talents is unacceptable. There has to be a rearrangement in that scouting department. And over the years, we have had players like Neymar Jr., Ronaldinho, El Fenomeno, which is Ronaldo. And so we do have history with Brazilian players, and we need to establish that back into FC Barcelona. So that is it for today's Barcelona Daily News. I 
know that this is a long video, but there is a lot that we do need to discuss. I have lost my voice a little bit, but that's basically what's going on in FC Barcelona right now. There is a lot of things to look forward to, and there will be more transfer rumors that we will be discussing in the next video. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.